Hello everybody and welcome back to another edition of Kopi Chat with me, your host Weilin. It's been a while since we've spoken and I have a new topic that I'm sure will interest you a great deal and that is the TikTok sale. Now I know this news is a little bit older now, but I think that there's a perspective that hasn't been covered at all. And all this came about with from a discussion that I had with a friend of mine, uh, my friend Ryan, who's been on other shows with me on this channel, who asked me the question, I don't understand why um, this deal is even happening. If the United States had the concern that um, user data, you know, it's a threat to national security because American user data would be exposed to the Chinese government, then why not just ban the app altogether? Uh, why go through this whole tedious process of trying to structure a sale you know, that just complicates matters all around. So that, dear viewers, has a very nice answer that I think uh, needs this video to properly give credit to. All right, in order to get started, let me take you to the browser. So look here. Um, for those of you who don't know, President Donald Trump recently received a second Nobel Peace Prize nomination for brokering uh, a deal between Serbia and Kosovo, uh, two countries which I cannot place on a map, uh, but I know that Kosovo used to be a part of Serbia in the 90s and they had a big war and then Kosovo left. But since then, they haven't really been friends, they haven't had economic relationships, they haven't traded, and so it's been in a really unproductive stalemate. So President Trump has uh, brokered a deal between them that will facilitate trade, you know, and increasing economic cooperation. And that's in, ad in addition to the work already done in the Middle East with Israel and her neighbors, the UAE and Bahrain. So this is important because it tells us, offers proof positive that President Donald Trump is in fact a deal maker at heart, by instinct, by inclination, everything. And he seeks every opportunity to make deals. And in at least, you know, these two cases uh, of Serbia, Kosovo, and over in the Middle East, his talents have allowed things that normally wouldn't have taken place to actually come to fruition. So that is the foundation for us to understand what's going on with TikTok. So did you know that about halfway through, you know, when the TikTok deal was announced, when it was announced that there would be a TikTok deal, the Chinese government made a little change to their domestic laws that would restrict foreign companies from owning certain Chinese tech products. So that was timed, you know, it co the timing of this announcement coincided with you know, the TikTok deal being floated. So I think it's pretty obvious to say that it is about the TikTok deal. Uh, it is that the Chinese government saw that there was this thing happening without its involvement, without its approval. And it was a very concerning time because it could not do anything, could not help, you know, the Chinese company. It could not, uh, approve or deny the deal so one could look at you know look at this through a lens that says the reason why the chinese government wants to do this in, is in order for them to exert a measure of control ultimately of course they want chinese companies to do well to make a lot of money be very successful uh, but also to protect them uh, from you know foreign bullying which they would call it and uh, to make sure that any such deals are aligned with China's own national interests, which is entirely reasonable, right? Um, so in order to drive home that point, let's take a quick look at what the Chinese state media says about the TikTok deal. China to protect TikTok at all costs. Say no to US robbery of TikTok. Chinese government's involvement makes a difference in TikTok deal. New TikTok deal shuns worst case scenario. So just from these headlines alone, you can get a sense of what the Chinese government at least wants the public to think, not necessarily what they think 
in themselves, you know, in their hearts and minds. But this is what they want us to see. So they want us to see that China is protecting TikTok at all costs, uh, that they are fighting uh, US robbery of TikTok, uh, that the Chinese government has an important role to play in the TikTok deal, and that the new TikTok deal is avoiding the worst case scenario. So I think this says a lot, right? Because this shows us that the Chinese government needs, wants to be involved in any deal that is made and you cannot accept if they are left out of the loop. So it is entirely reasonable, natural for them to say, okay, I'm going to put in place this law that will allow me to veto any deal if it doesn't suit my national interest or the interest you know, of the company even because just knowing that the Chinese could veto the deal of course would influence the negotiations of the companies that are trying to acquire TikTok. They would need to find ways to offer a deal that suits China a little better, which may also be favorable to ByteDance, which is the owner of TikTok. So such is the dynamism, you know, all the stuff that's going around this deal that Microsoft's CEO, Satya Nadella, said the TikTok Oracle deal is unrecognizable from the one Microsoft bid on. And this is truly, to me, is remarkable. So Satya Nadella is saying that uh, it the current deal looks nothing like the deal Microsoft originally bid on for TikTok's US operations. And I think that's entirely, I believe that. There's no reason not to believe that. The deal has obviously changed a lot since then. Uh, I think that the situation was very fluid because um, everybody has their constraints, right? So some companies don't really have enough money, but they have, say, like Oracle, the technological know-how to make the deal happen, to secure, you know, US national interest, to protect user data, because they do a lot of that for their enterprise customers. Uh, whereas Walmart has a great deal of money but you know, none of the uh, technical sophistication or uh, understanding of social media. They may be able to say something about how to manage a large customer database because that's what they do. So everybody brings something different to the deal and they had to find a creative way to structure the deal and which Oracle and Walmart together have successfully done. In fact, Walmart originally was on Microsoft's side trying to find a deal, but evidently, and I think this says something about Microsoft, they couldn't find a way to structure a deal that is attractive for white dance. They didn't, they didn't have the imagination or the creativity to make a pitch that white dance wanted to accept. So that's very unfortunate for Microsoft, but it is really interesting that it shows, you know, all the uh, confusion, all the possibilities that arise you know when you think outside the box the fact that this whole tiktok deal was so outside the box so unexpected really threw everybody for a loop but led us to this amazing situation where oracle is bidding to be you know a technology partner to tiktok meaning that they don't own the whole tiktok uh operation in the united states but they will be doing all the relevant bits about technology that protect uh, US interests. So I think all this is possible because yeah, President Donald Trump has a unique talent to find a deal where none existed, to find an opportunity where everybody can win, where to other people it just looks like I just need to ban it. And Everybody loses from that, but we have no other choice, right? That's the conventional view of things. So uh, I think this example, more than others, really illustrates the creativity, you know, the deal-making ability uh, of Donald Trump, as well as, you know, Oracle CEO Larry Ellison. And I hope that, um, you know, this also gives you a little glimpse into what I think is a remarkable, remarkable uh, thing to happen. Everybody comes out of this with something, right? Uh, consumers can still use the app. Uh, ByteDance will get a huge windfall. Um, Chinese companies will see that, you know, they can actually succeed uh, even in, you know, uh, this 
economic cold war between the United States and China, they can still make a lot of money. And even China's government looks good because they can claim that, well, without us, this deal would not have happened because we helped to get more favorable terms for you know, our Chinese companies. Everybody wins. And that's remarkable. And that all came from the one decision that instead of banning the app outright, we're going to turn it into a deal. And that is the beauty of it all. And that's what I want to share with you. So thank you again for listening. As always, I really enjoy talking to all of you, listening to this video, watching this video. And I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.